In chapter number five, there are two topics, master pages and user controls. Both of these tools are going to be features that we can use to make our jobs easier. And what that's going to do is provide a higher degree of productivity. Now, not only is it going to be productivity, it's also going to allow us to provide a more consistent design to our application. A dynamic web template. These files, they actually allow you to create a consistent look and feel with your application. So what I'm going to do here in C Sharp is I'm going to create a quick project so that I can show you how these work. So right over here, I'm just going to select this program type. This is what I wanted to show you right over here. It's called side.master. Now, a master, a file with a master extension is what we call a master page, and that's the dynamic web template. Now, many, many years ago, when I was creating web pages, we used to do it by hand, of course. Well, what you would do is you would define a table, and the table would give you control over your web page so that you could place items in particular places. Like you would have a footer, you would have a header, you would have places to put images, you would have places to put navigation. So there would be this table that provided structure for the overall look and feel of our web page, our web presentation. Every time you added a new page, you would have to copy that table into the new page. And again, that provided our consistent look and feel. Well, inside of the Visual Studio world, instead of us doing that, we work with master pages. So here is a master page on my screen. And right over here, you'll see what it looks like. So I've got this nice little banner here at the top. I've got some navigation for a breadcrumb that will take me back home. And then over here, I have a content placeholder. Now, this master page that I was describing, we're going to be able to see it now when I click on the individual entities. So I'm going to click on countries. Now, this is going to be a table, and it's going to return multiple countries. Now, the template is part of the master page. So the master page is going to provide this consistent look and feel. So whether it's a country or it's a customer, I'm going to have the same look and feel to the web page and I did not have to create different styles. It's just automatically inside of the master page and available everywhere. So I know it looked a little bit hokey when we first saw it. But again, I'm going to have a grid. Over here, I can filter. I'm going to have this grid that will then be filtered based on what I select over here. You'll see I've got somebody in London, somebody in Canada. If I were to come over here and look for... Ah, there we go, United Kingdom. So now you'll see it filters to only show me the items from London. So again, this functionality is all being defined on the master page. So let me go ahead and take a look here. I'm going to go back to the home page, and then I want to take a look at this master page again. So it was a very basic looking page. When I go to the code behind, they do provide a little bit of information, so I see that I'm using something else. So it's a partial class. There may or may not be more code. There we go. I wanted to go over here to my markup. All right, so this is the look and feel for my web page, and it looks like I've chosen something that doesn't have a whole lot of structure to share. It's going to be over here under the dynamic data, and then over here we're going to see these individual templates. So over here, we have templates for details. Let me go ahead and double-click details. And this is going to allow me to see like an entire row at a time. Now again, this same page structure is going to be used regardless of table. There we go. So let me go to countries. And then I'm going to go to details for a particular country. And this is what it looks like. Let me go back to the home page. I'm going to go to Customers, and again, I'm going to go to Details, and again, it's the same look and feel. The only thing that changes is the number of columns and populated information, but everything else is the same, and it's based on a particular template. So when we talk about these master pages, the master page itself is going to have a master directive. So again, here's our script tag at the top. After the script tag, we have our directive. Master is the type object. Again, if I go to the code behind page, you'll see there I'm driving from master page. 
Next, we get to specify our language. And again, the same two things we're used to seeing, which is the code behind for Visual Studio and inherit for the runtime when the application is online on the web server. I'm going to switch back over to the PowerPoint presentation. And right over here for the discussion of a master page, this begins on page number four and it continues on to page number five. So master pages have a master directive and a content placeholder. In addition, and you saw this a moment ago, and I'm going to show you again, you get to see your HTML markup. Now, once I have one of these pages, a master page, and I have a content page like default.aspx, I'm looking at the markup for my default page, and you'll notice there's no HTML structure. Instead, in the page attribute, I have a pointer to the master page, and the master page contains the HTML structure. So all I do here inside of the content page is add an ASP content control, and I point to the content placeholder. And then here, I can specify the information that I want to display. I'm going to go back to the site.master for a moment. And in design view, you'll recall this pink outline here, and it's called a content placeholder. So over here inside of the content placeholder, let me go back over to my default page. You'll notice over here, it's just a grid view control. Your web templates and Dreamweaver are the same thing as our master pages in Visual Studio. You'll just get to practice with them and do things a little bit differently. Now, for most of the site.masters, what you might do here, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to create an ASP.NET web application. And what I'm going to do is add a site.master. So I don't have one by default. So I'm going to add a new item. And then over here, I'm going to find a master page. And again, by default, it's named site1.master, but I can name it whatever I want. So I can name it uh, PT Master for ProTech. Over here, I'm going to go ahead and click Add. And then here is my site.master. Now, by default, when I look over here in the content placeholder, again, back to the markup, the content placeholder is in the div tag. Now, the content placeholder is going to be where you're going to put information for the individual web page. But what you want on every web page will be either inside of the form or inside of the body, again, depending on if I want it to be a page or a web form. So what I'm going to do is something a little bit different. It's going to be similar to what I did this morning, though, or yesterday when we created that table. I'm going to create a very simplistic example I'm going to insert a table with two columns and three rows. Now, my example here is that the first item up here is going to be the like page logo and description. So this would be the very top of my web page. Over here at the bottom, this would be, let's say, for example, my... Uh, Let's say it might even have a disclaimer. You'll notice I'm throwing a pipe symbol in there. And then over here, I could also throw in some other links like contact us, whatever the case might be. So again, if I don't use this web template here called a master page, I would have to create this structure on every single web page. Over here, I now have the content section of my website right over here. So content, and this is where I would place my images, my content. I guess I've already got content there, right? Hyperlinks, video, whatever the case might be. So again, the center portion or center right portion of the page is going to be all of that other stuff. All right, so over here on the left, this might be my navigation. So over here I would have nav. Again, this would be a simple look and feel to a web page. If I want every web page to look just like this, then I create this master page. And now that I've defined this, I have to go to source view because I have to find that content placeholder. The content placeholder is going to allow me to specify where 
I can place content, and it looks like I may have overwritten that data. I did. So there is no content placeholder. I'm going to head back over to Design View. Let's say that I'm going to have corporate navigation here at the top, but underneath the corporate navigation, I might allow you to add your own navigation. So what I'm going to do is come over here to my toolbox, and under standard, I'm going to look for a content placeholder. And I'll add that here, and now you can add your own content there. After the page logo and description, I may even decide to give you a little bit of real estate over here so you can add your own office logo. So again, I'm going to go to the toolbox. I'm going to add a content placeholder so that you can add a logo. Over here inside of the body of the web page, again, I can allow you to add content there. So I'm going to add a content placeholder. Now each of these placeholders can be named. So I'm going to go to the one for navigation. And in my properties window, I'm going to change the ID from content, excuse me, content placeholder 1. I'm going to name it navigation for the one at the top, the content placeholder at the top for your logo. I'm going to name that department logo. And I, I could name it placeholder or whatever the case might be. Over here is the body. So over here, I'm going to name the third content placeholder body content. Now, usually they're named main content, but I named mine body content. So this is an example of how you can create the look and feel of a web page. Now, I might have 75 pages in my presentation. I certainly don't want to copy and paste this markup to each one of the 75 pages. Because if Marty comes along and says, hey, we need to get rid of custom navigation for the user, I now have to go and edit 75 pages. But if I put all of this content, the structure, in one file, and 75 files are linked to it, I only have to update one file. So it's kind of like working with CSS, where you define it once and you make a change, and it applies to everything. So now that I have a master page, what I want to do is add a content page. I'm going to right-click my web application, and I'm going to add a new item. Over here, I've got a web content form. I'm going to select that and click Add, and that allows me to choose my master page. So again, it was web content form. And then I can click OK, and now this page, you'll see I only have content placeholders for my department logo, for my navigation, and for my body content. And then I get a built-in content placeholder also on the head section. And that allows me to use code to maybe uh, derive a page name for the title, or I could do some other stuff there. It just depends. But again, this is what a content page looks like. If I go back to webform1.aspx, and I want to make this a content page. What I have to do is delete everything. Now, I say everything. I'm going to change this in a moment. I'm going to delete everything because it's a brand new page, and it doesn't have any content I want to keep. So I'm going to delete everything but the directive, and then I'm going to add an ASP content control. I've got to give it an ID, so I'm going to call it content1. Next, I want this to be processed on the server, so run at equals server. Next, I have a content placeholder ID. Now, it's not being nice to me at the moment because I did not do what I was supposed to. So the reason IntelliSense is not working is because I did not add a mapping to the master page file. Now that I've added a mapping to the master page file, IntelliSense should be back in play. So let's try this again. Content placeholder ID equals, and then over here I would specify body content. And now I can type in the content for that page, like blah, blah, blah. 
So now when I run this particular page called Web Form 1, I'm going to get to see my custom content of blah, 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 nested inside of the overall structure of my web application. So here's my custom body content. There's my footer, my disclaimer, my links. There's my navigation. And over here, my page logo and description at the top. And I can see that I have a problem with my table, but it's something I could fix later if I were going to keep this. All right, so again, anytime I create a page and I point it to the master page, then I'm automatically going to inherit structure, and all I have to do now is focus on content of the web page. Okay, that was page 5-4, 5-5. Next, they talk about how to create a master page on page number 5-6. I did that as well. Content pages on page 5-7. Again, this is very similar to what I did. I did create a content page pointing to the master page. I also converted an existing page over to a content page. Next, you can even nest master pages. And this is on page number 5-11 through 5-12. 